<laughs> Hi there. Um, that would be awesome. Thank you. Just one, the thicker one. Thanks, Nick.
Adrian and Deb, welcome, welcome. Thanks for joining. Oh, good, Claudia. Welcome, welcome. <laughs> All right, nine o'clock on the dot. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Welcome to Monday morning yoga. How we doing? Good. Yeah. Loving this beautiful weather. Mm -hmm. Let's start in a seat. So find an opportunity to use the blocks, if you will, to prop up your seat or to place under the knees. Sometimes that really helps with comfort. Steve, if you want to shift just to the left a little bit, so you've got a better, better view of me. <laughs> so we look... Oh, you see, oh, we have two seeds today. And you guys match, too. You guys, like, have the same colors on. <laughs> I so, so, yeah, so Steve, new Steve. <laughs> What's the last name? Steve. K. K and A? All right. <laughs> So beautiful, beautiful use of the block. Um, we look to elevate our hips a little bit in our seat to be able to sit up nice and tall. So let's shift your seat. <laughs> okay, so let's try this then. If you come up onto your knees and then put the block here and sit back like that. So hero's pose might be more comfortable for you today then. And then drop the block down so that you're sitting, your sit bones sit on this part. And if you need to raise it, you can bring the second block and stack it. And then get your sit bones comfortably resting on it. So by elongating the spine, you kind of open it up to accept the breath to begin our practice. So just allow the eyes to soften or for them to close completely. Take a little body scan from crown of the head down to your seat. Notice just anything. Notice how your breath feels this morning. Notice if there's any body parts that are talking to you. We're just going to take the first minute in silence. I'm going to chime the bell just to allow ourselves this opportunity to come to our mat, to be present, to focus either on the breath or maybe bring your awareness to the middle of your brain. If your tongue is pressed against the roof of your mouth, allow it to drop down, be soft in the mouth, creating just this open space in the throat. And 
think about something that lights you up and we'll begin. Keeping your eyes soft or closed. Just bringing awareness to that thought of what lights you up. Whatever came to mind represents truthfulness. So last week we talked about the first yogic principle of himsa. It's known as one of the yamas, which are considered ethical restraints. The second yama is called satya in Sanskrit, translating to truthfulness. Our throat is often referred to as our truth center. So we're going to incorporate clearing our throat chakra a little bit today. We're also going to incorporate a mudra called the Kali Mudra. We've done it before where we bring our hands together, interlace the fingers and point the index finger straight up. The Kali Mudra is named after a fierce goddess in Hinduism, in the mythical stories of Hinduism. That goddess's name is Durga. Durga represents the empowerment that enables us to stand in our truth. The index fingers pointing straight up re represent the sword that Durga carries. And that sword is meant to slay illusions. So Satya, practicing Satya in our practice today, practicing being honest in our words and actions with ourselves and those around us. Again, going back to what yamas represent, ethical restraints. And being true to ourselves, speaking truth, not lying. Ahimsa, we practiced it last week, nonviolent, honoring nonviolence to ourselves and to others. And moving into satya, we incorporate ahimsa, and now we kind of put another layer on it. So bring your hands to your heart center to set your intention this morning. So this mudra is called Anjali Mudra, the prayer mudra. We'll just allow it to rest, the thumbs rest against our heart space, connecting then our intention as we Say it silently to ourselves, sort of sending it into the heart space to feel it. Bringing it all together with the sound of Om to open our practice. So take a full inhale, sigh it out through the mouth, release. And then inhale, Om.
put our chin parallel with the earth. Grow a little taller in your seat. Feel the lengthening up of the spine, the energy moving from the feet all the way out to the crown of the head. Notice just the softening of the muscles in the neck. In the throat. And then softly flicker the eyes open and we're gonna come on to our backs. So no props, just come to Shavasana if you will. So we're gonna be here for just a few minutes, two to three minutes. And then we're gonna rotate onto our bellies. So we're exploring the breath here. I want you to just separate your legs a comfortable distance apart. Take the arms out to the sides a little bit. Palms face up or down. Allow the back of the head to gently rest against the mat. And then start noticing, take a body scan here, maybe from your heels up the legs. through the hips and pelvis area. Check in with the belly. Notice how the back thigh is pressing against the mat, starting to soften. Come up the front side from the belly, through the rib cage, up to the chest. Notice how the breath lifts the collarbones a little. Again, notice here the space between the ears and the shoulders. Softening the neck muscle, softening the throat, the nose and the gaze. The eyes can be closed or the eyes can be at a soft gaze or looking straight up at the ceiling. There's a mantra that represents satya, truthfulness, and it's sat nam in Sanskrit. I am truth. So these next breaths, just like bowls, inhaling sat, exhaling nam, quietly to yourself. Notice your back settling in a little bit more here as you let go of any grasping. Any clenching. And then adding a little bit of movement here. Bring your hands together if you can right Extend your arms out onto your front side and interlace your fingers, pointing the index fingers straight up. And then inhale, take the arms overhead. And exhale, lowering back down. So moving this Kali Mudra, inhale. Those index fingers pointing to the back of the room. And exhale, lower down. Again, maybe choosing to inhale the word sat. And exhale the word nam. Inhale, sat. Exhale, nam. And just keep moving like that. Five more inhales and exhales. Moving at your own pace. Feeling the breath help you to move. Allowing the breath to help lift the arms overhead. One more time. Inhale. 
the number we're calling. And exhale, lowering down. And release the arms. Come back to our Shavasana for three more breaths. Tracing the breath now, feeling the inhale through the nose, exhale through the nose. Noticing the rise and fall of the belly, how the breath fills the rib cage heart space, how it travels back down. And then start to slide your heels toward your sit bones. Rock on to your right side all the way, rotate, rotating onto your belly. Keep your head right where it is. Lower down, extend the legs out, and then stack your hands. Let the elbows come out to the side and allow your forehead to rest on the backs of your hands. And then start with your legs together. Notice how this feels for your low back. Have the tops of your feet resting on the mat. For Marilyn, try and let the hand, the arms come down and stack your hands so your forehead rests on your hands, backs of your hands. And now start, if the legs, if your back, if your low back feels fine with your legs together, keep them there. If you feel any pinching in your low back, I want you to start separating the legs. Take the legs apart to that point. Well, actually everybody play with it. Separate your legs and notice how the low back feels. So just explore, maybe bring them back together. Find that sweet spot where your low back, where your sacrum feels like it's at ease. Like there's space to breathe where you're not, where it's not grasping or having any stress in it. And then settle into that sweet spot. So notice where the legs are. So your sacrum, if you were to bring your hands back to your low back and you feel where the sacrum bones are, your legs should be wider than those two points. And that will help your sacrum feel lower. So for my gentlemen in the room, your legs might feel better closer together. Men generally have a, a more narrow sacrum. Women are a little wider. So we'll be here for another minute. So in this minute, I want you to really explore how the breath feels now, laying on your belly compared to your back. Notice how when you inhale, the belly's pressing into the mat. As you exhale, maybe you feel the breath wrap around that low back, helping to release tension. I read a stat, a statistic, 80% of the population will experience low back pain at some point in their lives. Ooh. That's a big number. So yoga, one of the founders of yoga, Iyengar, believes that yoga can eliminate all back ailments. So you are the lucky ones to have found this practice. <laughs> This pose, crocodile pose, really helps to target that low back area to help tension be released. It also helps us breathe from the diaphragm, which is so important because it helps us get a full breath. We tend to breathe it all day long from our chest. 
but getting a deeper breath helps the wellness of our lungs, our whole respiration system. Got five more breaths here. So really noticing, tracing, bringing your awareness to the inhale and the exhale and noticing where the breath is traveling in the body. One more breath in and out. And then from where you are, bring your hands, slide them underneath your shoulders. Start pushing yourself up and push your feet to your heels. We'll spin the folks around, don't worry. If your head is still facing the windows, that's fine. We're gonna all face forward in a minute. So just wherever you are, take child's pose. Take your knees as wide as your mat. Let your sits bones sink towards your heels. Allow the chest and forehead to start to move toward the earth. If it's not getting there comfortably, use a block under the forehead. Bring the earth to meet you. So that's a phrase you'll hear often is allow, if you're not reaching the earth naturally, bring the earth to you. Take another breath here, inhale. And exhale. And then inhale, start walking the hands toward you, lifting your upper body up, and then come up on your knees. And for my friends that are facing the windows, spin around. And let's all meet in the middle of our mat, knees about a fist distance apart. So your knees are under your hips. And then drop forward. And bring the hands down to the mat and just bring your wrists slightly in front of your shoulders. So notice that I've got a little bit of an angle here. Spread your fingers, draw the navel toward your spine, and then on your inhale, lift the crown of your head. Let the belly drop down as you tilt your tailbone up. So let your pelvis lead the way. So start coming into, into cat pose by tucking the tailbone. Now tuck your chin to your chest, round your spine. Press into the earth, press the earth away from you, cat pose. Inhale, opposite motion, the pelvis is rocking up now, the tailbone tilting up, the crown of the head tilting up, open up the throat. Exhale, rounding the spine. And keep moving like that with your breath. And I invite you to let the breath start and have the movement follow the breath. Notice if you feel a lot of weight in your wrists, maybe tuck some into your thumb, your index finger, and the tip of your third, fourth, fifth. Inhale into cow and exhale into cat. Stay in cat pose for a full breath, noticing just that beautiful opening of the upper back, the spine, and then we're going to push our feet to our heels. Keep your arms fully extended out in front of you for a more active child's pose, kind of coming between the arms. Breathe in to the back of the neck. Come up on your fingertips. Push your fingertips into the mat and energetically pull back. So you feel a deeper stretch across the upper back area. So energetically pulling, try and pull the mat towards you as you press your fingertips into the mat. 
and then inhale back to tabletop. The knees under the hips. We're going to extend our right leg back behind us, toes on the, with the mat, and then drop that right heel down. Push your body back. So you get a deep stretch in the back of that right leg. Inhale to rock forward. Exhale to rock back. Inhale, rock forward. Exhale, rock back. One more time. Inhale, rock forward. Exhale, rock back, and then come to neutral, lift that right leg, level your hips out, turn your toes toward the mat, so this is moving in a spinal balance, float that left arm up by the ear when you're ready, the palm turning to face this exit wall, so we do that to externally rotate the shoulder, the left shoulder. Draw the navel in so the belly is not sagging. You feel like you're hollowing out. Inhale the breath. Exhale, round the spine and bring your elbow to touch your knee. Inhale to lengthen. And exhale, elbow to knee. Inhale to lengthen. And exhale, elbow to knee. Inhale, lengthen, drop hands and the knee, and then come down to your forearm. Interlace your fingers, extend the index fingers pointing straight out for that Kali Mudra. Moving into dolphin pose, tuck your toes under, and then straighten the legs, lifting the hips up to the ceiling as the head comes in between the upper arm. Full breath in, full breath out, full breath in, heels are lifted, legs straighten, straightening, hip lifting toward the sky, one more inhale, and then exhale, drop back down, come back to tabletop, and we'll do that on the other side, so take the left leg back, drop that Heel down, get that deep stretch for the back of the left leg. Inhale to rock forward. Exhale, drop it down. Inhale, rock forward. Exhale. One more time. Inhale, rock forward. Exhale, drop it down. And then we lift that left leg. Level out your hips. So if you feel a little bit of a collapsing in the back, draw the navel toward the spine. When you're ready, lift that right arm up, the palm facing the TV wall now, beautiful. Push through that left heel and reach to the right fingertips. Your gaze is looking down so that we're not creating any uh, pinching in the neck. Full breath in to lengthen. And then we're going to draw the elbow to meet the knee, rounding the back. Inhale to lengthen. Exhale, elbow to knee. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, elbow to knee. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, elbow to knee. Inhale, lengthen, drop. The tabletop and then come to forearms again. Interlace fingers, extend the index fingers, pointing forward. That's Kali Mudra. Tuck your toes under on an exhale. Lift the hips, finding dolphin pose. Lift. Gaze is looking in between back towards your legs. So dolphin helps to stretch the shoulders. So just notice sensations that are going on here as you're pressing into the forearms. Nice alignment, everyone. Notice how your elbows, I'm seeing how beautiful alignment with elbows and shoulders. 
See if you can lift the hips just a little bit higher, pressing the head in between the forearms just a little bit more. And then rock forward. So pay attention here for a moment. We're gonna come in a forearm plank. So walk your feet back a little bit, drop your hips down so you're making a line of energy from your heels out to the crown of the head. Elbows under the shoulders. Breathe in, holding here five, four, three, two, and then one. Drop your thigh first, your pelvis, your pelvis area, untuck your toes, and then bring your arms out in front of you a little bit, setting right up for seat pose. So a very mild accent. So alignment here, you don't want your elbows going out to the sides. We want them under the shoulders and slightly in front of the shoulders. So you should be able to wrap your fingertips around your elbows. If you can't, then bring the elbows in a little bit. And then again, elbow crease is slightly in front of the shoulder. Spread your fingers, press the forearms into the mat as we lift the chest and open up the throat chakra. So we're not clenching the neck, we're not dropping the head back. Notice the extension. Find that comfortable distance for the legs. No need to zip the legs together. Find where your sacrum is in neutral. Keep pressing into the forearms a little bit to help find that back extension. The chest opening, heart space opening and shining forward. And then we lower down, stack your hands again, the backs of the hands, your forehead rests against the backs of the hands and bend your knees. Separate the legs a little bit and then just gently windshield wiper the legs from side to side to release that back bend. So a little instruction today on our pose called Bhujangasana. So go ahead and lower the legs. And then I want you to slide your hands next to your side body underneath your shoulders and hug your elbows into your side body. So lift your gaze just a little bit to look up here. So notice I'm doing it um, upright, but you can see the space between my shoulders and my ears. So when we do cobra pose, when we do cobra coming out of, uh, well, in our sun salutations, we don't want to scrunch our shoulders up to our ears. So just like in sphinx pose, a comfortable distance apart with our legs, press your thighs into the mat. On your inhale, peel your upper body away from the mat. The arms do not straighten. They don't come all the way straight yet. Lower down. So just baby cobras here to start. Inhale, peel the upper body and exhale lower. So this next one, imagine you can do it without pressing into your hands. So lift up a little bit and then take your hands off the mat. And then notice all the muscles working in the back. Exhale, lower down. So when our practice advances, then maybe we're straightening our arms and really getting a longer arc. But for right now, just practice a baby cobra. So inhale, peeling the heart space up and exhale, lower down. So squeeze our, squeeze two. <laughs> Keep your elbows hugging in. Inhale, lifting up. And exhale, lower down. 
Now bring your hands low, a little bit lower. Now in. There you go. Inhale. Notice the difference. Yeah. So under the shoulders. Lower down. And we rest. Take your hands alongside your body. Turn one cheek to the mat. Take a couple breaths here. Maybe rock the lower back from side to side a little bit. And turn the opposite cheek to the mat. So we come into Cobra Pose so often and alignment of this pose is so key to not create any additional tension in the low back. So bringing your hands under your shoulders again. This time after Cobra, we're gonna push our feet to our heels, lift the hips in a downward dog. So again, hands under your shoulders, hug the elbows in, Push your thighs into, into the mat. Inhale, lifting up. And exhale, lower down. Tuck your toes under. Push yourself up to tabletop. Round the spine into cat pose. And then straighten the leg. The hips lift you up. Finding downward dog. So just like in dolphin, looking for our head now to be in between our arms. Gaze looking back at the leg. Same placement of the hands, pressure in the thumb, the index finger, and the tips of the third or fifth finger. So pressing the low belly toward the back, uh, sorry, tops of the thighs and pedal out your downward dog. So now drop one heel and bend the knee of the other leg. Walk into taking your dog for a walk. And just stretching out the calves and the hamstring. And then lift your gaze to look between your hands, rock the body forward, dropping the hips down. We come to plank pose, drop the knees down, come up on your knees. Take your left leg out to the side. We're gonna come into gate pose to stretch the side body a little bit. So your left foot, left foot, the edge of it is parallel with the wall. Inhale, right arm up, get some length, and then walk the left fingertip down the leg, reach through the right fingertip. Keep drawing this right arm toward, so it's in line with the ear. Beautiful, everyone. Breathe into that whole right side body. Press into that left foot a little bit to help root you down. One more breath in. And exhale, let's lower, come into a balance here. Lower the right hand down to the mat. Left foot can stay on the mat, left arm comes up. Now maybe add lifting that left leg. If it's lifted, flex the left foot, push the heel toward the TV wall. Notice the long line of energy from the right hand across the chest, reaching through those left fingertips. Beautiful, everyone. And exhale, lower down. Bring that left knee in. Taking the right foot out to the side. Right edge of the foot parallel with the wall. Inhale, left arm, reaching it up. Start walking those right fingertips down. Try and keep that left arm by the ear. Really feeling the stretch through that left hip flexor, through the left side of the body. Beautiful. 
<laughs> yeah, no pain, no pain. And then we'll drop that left hand down to the floor. Keep that right foot planted as we lift the right arm and then add the leg. Finding this balance here, push through the right heel with that right foot flexed. One more breath in and then exhale, lower down. Bring that right knee in and come to tabletop. They're practicing now lowering. So we lower, we're gonna, instead of knees, chest, chin, we're gonna lower the whole upper body and then come into Cobra. So your wrist creases are facing the top of your mat. Rock the shoulders forward. So you're already starting to pitch forward. Now rotate elbow creases to the front of the room, hug the elbows in as we lower the whole upper body. So notice your hands come right in the position for Cobra, right under the shoulders. Separate the legs to that comfortable distance. On an inhale, peeling the upper body off the mat. And exhale, lower down, tuck the toes under. We round the back in a cat pose and then continue straightening the legs, hips lift. Finding full extension in the arms, in the spine, downward dog. And usually it's about a fist distance in between the feet. If you're feeling a little tight in the hamstrings today, you can bend your knees to then get those hips to lift up. Let gravity help you here. So if the knees bend a little bit, notice how the hips are a little bit freer to reach toward the sky. Lift your gaze, look between your hands and walk your feet up to the top of your mat. Lifting up halfway, take the arms out to the side. Come all the way up to stand in, interlace the fingers, Kali Mudra, index fingers pointing straight up. Just take a look at your feet, notice if they turned out or in, we want the second toe to face forward. Inhale to lengthen, exhale, side bend to the right. <laughs> People went to the right. Inhale, push center, side bend to the left. Let your index fingers pull you into the side bend. Think about the power of that sword. One more time, each side. And then coming to center. Draw the belly in. Let the arms float out to the side. Hinge at your hips. Coming into Uttanasana forward fold. Inhale, lift up halfway. Exhale, plant your hands, bend your knees. Step back, finding plank pose. On your exhale, let your hips lift you up into downward facing dog. Full breath in. Full breath out. Inhale, lift the right leg. Three-legged dog. Draw that right knee into your chest and step that right foot forward and spiral that left heel down. So we're making our way into warrior one. Right knee is bending toward a 90 degree angle. Your feet are placed on two separate planks of wood. Bring the arms back, Superman arms. Lift your belly off that right thigh. Find balance here. Equal pressure in the feet. On your inhale, let your arms sweep the upper body into warrior one. Full breath in, full breath out. And see where you can soften here. It's a strong pose, but we can let gravity help us here. Align this first and then let gravity lead you deeper into the pose. So maybe that 
right knee is Press into the outer edge of the back foot. And then transitioning into crescent lunge. So you're gonna lift that left heel up and just pivot the toes so they face forward. Interlace the fingers, finding that Kali Mudra. Oops, gotta get it in here. Lower that left knee down. And inhale to rise, straighten that leg. Exhale, drop the knee down. Inhale, straighten the leg. Exhale, lower. Inhale, straighten the leg. And then stay here. Sweep the arms behind your back. Interlace your fingers. So either if the arms are able to extend, bring those palms together. If that's too much of a stretch for you, then bring the palms together, bend the elbows, and bring the knuckles to the sacrum. Getting the same benefit. Drawing the elbows toward each other, the chest open, the throat open. And then inhale, sweep the arms back up, interlace the fingers, Kali Mudra, and then lower the arms in front of you. Imagining that sword sort of slashing through any obstacles toward truth. Inhale, the arms overhead. Exhale, reach around in front of you. Inhale, overhead. And exhale, in front of you, bring the hands down to the mat. Step your right leg back, find plank pose. Options here, either take a child's pose. Either go right into downward dog or drop your knees. Lower the whole upper body. Inhaling into cobra. Exhaling into our rounded cat pose. And then coming into downward facing dog. And take a couple breaths here in downward dog. Full breath in and out. And then we're going to lift the left leg up. Find three-legged dog. Tuck that left knee into your calf. Step it forward. Plant that left foot down. Spiral your right heel down, finding warrior one legs. So your feet are on two different planks of wood. That left knee bending, bring the arms behind you, Superman arms. Draw the hips toward the midline for stability. Let the arms lift you up to warrior one. Settling in here. So beautiful Sanskrit mantra, Hira Sutta Asanam, steady and sweet, warrior one. Practices that. Transitioning to our high lunge, lift that right heel, turn the toes to face forward, interlace the fingers, taking that Kali Mudra. Inhale and then exhale, lower that right knee down, don't let it touch, and then straighten that right leg. And lower it down. Lift it back up to lengthen that leg, dropping the knee down, lifting it up. One more time, let it lower. Come back to your high lunge, sweep the arms behind your back and either straightening the arms, palms touching or bring the knuckles to your sacrum. Inhale, chest opening. Throat open. And then inhale the arms back up. We stay in high lunge. Kali Mudra, bring that sword in front of you. Sat Nam. Inhale the arms overhead. Exhale in front of you. 
Inhale, the arms overhead. Exhale, flashing the obstacles in your way for truth. And then let the arms drop down. Step the left leg back again. Take a child's pose, same downward dog, or rock forward to plank, lowering the knees, lowering the upper body, inhaling into cobra, and exhale, let's all meet in child's pose. So take your knees wide. Bring your toes to touch. Push your seat back towards your heels, sink your hips down, and then let the chest melt toward the earth. Let the forehead maybe rock a little bit from side to side, massaging that third eye, that space in between our eyebrows, representing our intuition. Beautiful standing series, everyone. Nice work. And then let's inhale, rolling up to sitting on our heels, rock up on your left hip and swing your legs out in front of you. So countering all that back bend all the back bending that we did with some twists. Sit up nice and tall, flex your feet, draw your right knee into your chest and step it over your left leg. Take your right hand behind this right hand, palm on the floor or on a block. Inhale, left arm up, find that length, then twist to the right. Hooking that left elbow with right arm. Keep your chin parallel with your, or in line with your sternum to start. So we don't want to go into the deepest part of our twist right away. We want to let the breath carry us in. So then with each exhale, your head can start to turn. But notice the shape of your shoulders and your ears. shoulders up, feeling our pelvis, our navel, gently moving into the twist. Pressing into that toe ball mound of the right foot might help to create a little bit more space in the pelvic area. One more breath in and out. Inhale through center, counter twist to the left, maybe bending the elbows, coming deeper into this counter twist. And then coming back up, release that right leg, shake out the legs, windshield wiper the feet. Sit up nice and tall again, and then draw that left knee into the chest, stepping it over the right leg. Left hand coming behind, float the right arm up by the ear, finding length, and then twist. So start with the chin in line with your sternum. With each exhale, moving a little deeper. Growing tall in your spine, feeling rooted in both sit bones. So our twists really help to massage our whole intestinal area, bringing out toxins. So next inhale, sigh out the breath. <sighs> and then inhale through center, counter twist to the right, rocking, lowering. And then come back up and release that left leg. Let's bring the soles of our feet together. 
not too far in, we're gonna do star pose first, Tarasana. So you want about two feet in between your heels and your pubic bone. Then interlace your fingers and reach forward. Wrap them around the feet. Bring the elbows out to the sides as we round into this forward fold, star pose. So you're making a star with those elbows coming out to the sides. Let the crown of your head drop towards your heels. Inhaling to four and exhaling to four. Next inhale, lifts you up. Take the legs out in front of you and then separate to a comfortable distance apart for you. Knees and toes face the ceiling. Don't let your legs, your knees rotate in when we fold forward. So even bring your hands to the inside of your thighs and roll your thighs up. And then arms lifting up like you have a beach ball and pretend you're reaching that beach ball forward. Stay here for a breath. And then maybe the hands come down. Maybe this is your edge. Or with each exhale, so we want to hinge forward, not round into this. You can always use a couple of blocks. One block, two blocks to support under your head, forehead. A wide legged forward fold. Beautiful. Keeping those knees and toes facing the ceiling. Keep the feet a little active, a little flat. And inhale to lift up. And then bring the legs together. Hashimotanasana, inhale the arms up by the ears. And again, like you have that hinge ball that you're reaching it forward to hinge forward. Again, blocks can be used. You can stack them on your legs so the head, the forehead can rest. Finding your edge. Try and keep the feet flat, pushing the big toes away from you. You can draw the pinky toes towards you. Relax any grasping in the thighs. One more full breath in and out. And then inhale to lift up. Using a little bit of core power to lower, bring your arms out in front of you. Interlace the fingers, making that Kali Mudra one more time. Just look forward, gaze at your index finger pointing straight out. Inhale, stop. Exhale, mind. And then start to lower. Five. Four, three, two, one. Float those arms overhead. Index fingers pointing out long toward the windows. Point your toes. And then as you flex your feet back towards you, lower the arms alongside. Hug the knees into your chest, rock from side to side. One more twist before we move into our final rest pose. So let the knees come to neutral, hug them in towards your chest and then let the arms drop out to the side. 
So you want your arms extending straight out from the shoulders, palms face up. And with your core, let your knees drop down to the left. Coming into our revolved abdomen twist, either keep the gaze facing up or turn your head to have your gaze look out over your right arm. Next inhale, feel it gather in your belly to then lift your knees back to neutral. Keep the arms right where they are. Draw the knees in toward the chest. Let your back neutralize for a moment. On your exhale, slowly lower knees down to the right. If the low back is feeling extra tight today, you can always put a block in between the thighs to help relieve some of that tension. And again, gaze either stays facing up toward the sky, or you can turn your head to look out over your left arm and start to soften with each inhale and exhale. If thoughts are starting to whirl in the mind, repeating that mantra, repeating any mantra over and over helps to calm those whirlings in the mind. Next inhale, feel it gather in your belly as you lift the knees back to center. Wrap your arms around your legs. Lift your forehead up to meet your knees. Breathe into the back of your neck. Just give yourself a little yogi hug here before we move into Shavasana. And then slowly lower the head. So if there is some tension in the low back for your rest pose, you might enjoy bringing the feet to the mat keeping the knees bent and then letting the knees and thighs fall together for constructive rest. Or you can extend your legs out long onto your mat for corpse pose, giving yourself a good, a comfortable distance between the legs. In either pose, you can keep the hands on the belly or let the arms come out to the sides. So finding a comfortable place for you to surrender into stillness. Shavasana being one of the most important parts of our practice to feel the residue from our asana, our physical practice. Allowing the body to surrender into the support beneath it, to know that you've done the work. Thanking your body for moving. Strengthening. And now it gets to rest. To reap all the benefits. To 
taking advice and noticing if there's any parts of your body that you're still trying to hold up. Let those areas soften. the whirlings of our mind just as important as moving our body. Finding this union of mind, body, and soul or spirit in our yoga practice. Slowly begin to deepen your breath as you invite small movements back in, wiggling your fingers, wiggling your toes, circling your wrists, circling your ankles. If your knees were bent, maybe stretch them out long. Maybe inhale the arms overhead, take a long stretch. And then hug the knees into your chest, roll onto the right side of your body into this nourishing fetal position, extending the right arm out to support your head. Deepen your breath here, feeling the energy move from the heart space down into the body, awakening. Reawakening the body and mind. Slowly then making your way up to a seat, coming back to how we began Finding a comfortable seat with the legs crossed. Keep the eyes closed or at a soft gaze, looking downward. Chin parallel with the earth. And then inhale the arms overhead, making that Kali Mudra one more time. Interlace the fingers, index fingers pointing straight up, and then draw those hands down to your heart space. Honoring Satya truth in our lives, truthfulness in our lives. When we remove falsity, we create clarity, transparency, and simplicity. Thank yourself for being here, for inviting yoga, this ancient practice into your life. The light in me sees and honors the light in each of you. Let's seal the practice with one ohm. Full breath in, exhale it out, sigh it out. Feel the breath in.
always a joy to see you all. Tomorrow I'll be here at 10 a.m. for intermediate yoga. Wednesday for yoga and meditation at 1.30. So hope to see you. Hi. We missed you. Thank you, Nancy. Thank you. Bye, Jeff. Bye.